Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone. Okay, I'm Ms. Ira. Today I'm going to present about language assessment principle and classroom practices by H. Douglas Brown. All right. Have you ever read this book? Yeah, this book, yeah. And then today I'm going to present about the first chapter. The title is Testing, Assessing, and Teaching. All right, these are the table of contents. The first is what is a test? The second is assessment and teaching. The third is approaches to language testing, as such a brief history. Yeah? And then the fourth is current issues in classroom setting. The first is what is test? Okay, what is test? A test is a method of measuring a person's ability, knowledge, or performance in a given domain. Okay, so it to determine a person's ability, knowledge, uh, and also performance, yeah? And then, what criteria should a test has? The first is method, the second is measure, the third is individual ability, knowledge, performance, and then given domain, okay. Method, what is method? Method is a way, how to do, the techniques, strategy, process, procedures, yeah, uh, with characteristic of structure. And then measure, instrument or tool to create, uh, for example, specific student's level of competence. And then individual's ability, knowledge, just like individual skill, competence, background experience, and then uh, for performance is uh, ability in performing language. And then the last is given to me, for some uh, specific area, for example, reading, speaking, listening, and writing. And then next is assessing. Okay, a test. Test is prepared administrative procedures that occurs at identifiable times. And then assessment is a uh, going process. For example, students respond to a question, offers a comment, tries out a new word, tries out a structure, and then makes essay, listens to recorder. Yeah, that's all activity assess can assess by a teacher or himself or the other students. Yeah. And next is informal and formal assessment. Informal and formal assessment. All right. Informal assessment, it is designed to elicit performance without recording result and making a fixed judgment about a student's competence. For example, at the end of continuum, our marginal comments on paper responding to draft and essay advice of how to better pronounce a word, suggestion for a strategy showing how to modify a better note taking to better remember of the lecture contents. And then formal assessment. Exercise uh, specifically designed to tap into storehouse of skill and knowledge constructed to keep an appraisal of students' achievement. Okay, and the question is, is a formal assessment always a test? Is a formal assessment always a test? All tests are formal assessments, but not all formal assessments are a test. Okay? All the tests are formal assessment, but not all formal assessments are a test. And then the third is formative and summative assessment. Formative assessment, it deals with the function. What's the function? Evaluating students in the process of forming their competences and skills with the goal of helping them to continue the growth process. And then the characteristic of formative assessment is delivered by the teacher. Feedbacks are internalized by students. The third is art toward the future continuation. And the last is informal. Okay, and then what about summative assessment? Okay, it aims to measure or to summarize what a student has pressed. 
Assumption of, of what a student has learned implies looking back and taking stock of how well that student has accomplished objectives. And number four, or the fourth, is norm reference and criterion reference test. Norm reference test, each test taker's course is interpreted in relation to a mean, so uh, or we call it average score, and then medium or middle score, and then standard deviation or extent of variance in scores, and or percentile rank. And then the purpose is to place test takers along a mathematical continuum in rank order. Scores are usually reported back to the test taker in the form of numerical score. For example, 230 out of 300 or 84% and etc. So uh, it form, uh, it show in the form of numerical score, yeah? And then typical of these tests are standardized tests. Yeah, it's, it's kind of standardized tests like SAT or TOEFL, and these tests are intended to be administrated to large audiences with the result efficiently disseminated to test takers. So when we, we have a TOEFL test and then the score on the, the result is show in a numerical score. So it's kind of no references test, okay? And then they must have fixed it. For predetermined responses in a format that can be scored quickly at minimum expense. Money and efficiency are primary concerned in these tests. And then next is criterion reference tests. They are designed to give test taker feedback, usually in the form of grades on specific course or lesson objectives. Tests that improve the students in only one class and are connected to a curriculum are criterion reference tests. So tests that involve, involve students in only one class and are connected to a curriculum called criterion reference test. Okay, much time and effort on the part of teacher are required to deliver useful, appropriate feedback to students. And then the distribution of students course across a continuum may be of little concern as long as instrument assesses appropriate objectives. As opposed to standardized large scale testing with with its emphasis on classroom-based testing criterion reference. Testing is more prominent interest than norm reverence testing. Okay. Okay. And next, number four is approaches to language testing over history. Approach to language testing in 1950s an era of behaviorism, testing focused on linguistic elements such as phonological, grammatical, and lexical contrast between two languages. And then 1970 until 1980s era of communicative theories, testing focused on the whole communicative event. And today, Testing focused on authentic and valid instruments that stimulate real world interaction. And then discrete point and integra uh, integrative testing. Discrete point testing constructed on the assumption that language can be broken down into its component parts and tools part can be tested successfully. For example, of skills component, listening, speaking, reading, writing, for example, of unit of language, phonology, graphology, morphology, lexicon, syntax, discourse, okay? And next, integrative testing. Based on older 1979, argued that language competence is unfilled. Um, unifield, I mean, sorry, unifield set of interacting abilities that cannot be tested 
uh, separately. And then communicator competence is uh, so global and required such integration that it cannot be captured in additive tests of grammar, reading, vocabulary, and etc. For example, closed test and dictation. What is closed test and dictation? We will learn at the next chapter. Yeah. And next, communicative language testing. In order for a particular language test to be useful for its indeed purposes, test performance must correspond in demonstrable ways to language use in on test situations. Integrative tests such as close only tell us about candidates' linguistic competence. They do not tell us anything directly about a student performance ability or knowledge about a language, not uh, the use of language. Yeah. And then communicative language testing presented challenges to test designers because they began to identify the real world task that language learners were called upon to perform. And then still communicative language testing. Yeah. But it was clear that the context for those texts were extraordinarily widely varied and that the sampling of tasks or any one assessment for subject needed to be validated by what language users actually do with the language. As a result, the assessment field become more and more concerned with the authenticity of task and the genuineness of text. And then next is performance-based assessment. In language courses and programs around the world, task designers are now, are now tackling this new and more student-centered agenda. It, it, it based on Anderson, Anderson 2001 or 2002. Instead of just open paper and pencil selective response tests of plethora of separate items, performance-based assessment of language typically involves oral production, written production, open-ended responses, integrated performance or across skill areas, and then group performance and other interactive tasks. Such assessment is time consuming. Yeah, such assessment is time consuming and therefore expensive. But those extra efforts are paying off in the form of more direct testing because students are assessed as they perform actual or stimulate real world tasks. And then computer based testing. Yeah, this advantages of computer based testing. The first is classroom based testing. The second is self directed testing on various aspects of language, just like vocabulary, grammar, discourse, etc. And then for these for upcoming high stickers, standardized tests. Some individualization in the case of CATS. And then the fifth is scored electronically for rapid reporting of result. And then disadvantages of computer based testing is first, lack of security and possibility of cheating in unsupervised computerized tests. The second is home ground quizzes may be mistaken for validated assessments. And then three, Open-ended responses are less likely to appear because of need for human scores. And the fourth is the human interactive element is absent. And then overall summary. Okay, overall summary from the first until the last that I give uh, explain to you. The first is assessment is an integral part of teaching learning cycle. The second is in an interactive communicative curriculum, assessment is most almost uh, is almost constant. And the third is test can provide authenticity 
motivation and feedback to the learner. And the fourth is tests are essential components of successful curriculum and learning process. And then about assessment. Okay, the process periodic assessment can increase motivation as milestones of students progress. And then appropriate assessment aid in the in the reinforcement and re retention of information. The third is assessment can confirm strength and pinpoint areas needing further work. And then assessment provide a sense of periodic closure to modules within a curriculum. And the fifth is assessment promotes students' autonomy by encouraging students' self-evaluation of their progress. And then the sixth is assessment can aid in evaluating teaching effectiveness. Okay, that's all uh, the overall summary about test and assessment, yeah? I hope that you can understand all of the material that I explained to you. The first chapter of Language Assessment, Principle and Classroom Practice by H. Douglas Brown. All right, that's all everyone that I can explain to you. I hope that you can understand and don't forget to read this book, okay? Thank you so much. See you on the next video. I'm Miss Ira. Bye-bye. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.